Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about the 20 books that I have checked out on Kindle Unlimited currently. If you don't know about Kindle Unlimited, it's a uh, subscription service you can get through Amazon where you can check out up to 20 books at a time. And it's kind of like a library situation. You check them in, check them out. You can't keep them though, unless you want to purchase them for full price, but you pay a certain amount of fee a month to be a part of Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to be talking about the 20 books that I have checked out currently. So let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about my current read, which is the Half Orcs Maiden Bride um, by Ruby Dixon. Uh, this came out yesterday and I am 50% of the way through and I'm loving it. But let's read the summary. Lady Yolanthe of Rockmorn Keep expects to be a spinster all her days. She's very tall, she's very poor, and she's 30. What lord could possibly want her? But then her father returns with news that he has found a bridegroom for her, one that is impressively tall, one that is strong and bold and wealthy. And best of all, he wants Yolanthe. It seems too good to be true. And when Yolanthe gets her first look at her husband-to-be, she realizes why. No one mentioned the orc part of things. So far, I am obsessed with this book. Um, it has a lot of the same customs, uh, marriage customs that I love in The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. This takes place in the same world, but they have like no correlation whatsoever. Like it's completely a standalone book. So you can read this book completely standalone, um, but it has the same marriage customs that my favorite novella ever has. And so, I have been adoring that. Um, so this one is so worth the read so far. Please pick it up. I think it's gonna be a five stars for sure. I also have Big Brain by Cassie Mint checked out. Um, this is the last book I have to read in the Big Boy series. This is a series by Cassie Mint where um, it's centered around bigger heroes getting the girl essentially. And I love them. Um, I think there's like eight books in this series and this is the last one I have to read. But I've also heard that this is everybody's least favorite. So. I'm a little hesitant to get into it, but it's only like 60 pages. So I'm just gonna push through to say that I finished the series. These are all like standalone by the way, so they don't like correlate to each other at all. It's the trip of a lifetime, ruined castles and ancient battlefields, but I can't stop longing for my burly professor. A year ago, I used to see more of him back before the professor's book deal, and rise to TV fame. I used to visit his office hours. We'd sit together and talk, going over lecture notes and assignments. A year ago, it felt like he was mine. He wasn't obviously. Professor Monroe was twice my age and so off limits it's not even funny. So why do I miss him so badly? Why does my chest ache when we pass in the halls? Why did I sign up for this trip looking for any excuse to spend a few weeks near him? And when we finally set foot in Scotland, why does it feel like my professor can't keep away either? Um, yeah, this is very short, 62 pages. Um, I think all Cassie Mint's books are on Kendall Limited and I can't wait to dive into her um, other like novella series um, after I read this one because I really would just want to read one series at a time. Um, so I really want to read after this, the one that has like um, thin ice and all like the winter ones that everyone loves. Um, so I'm gonna hopefully finish this in April. Okay, next I have Monster Romance. So I got into Lila Faye this year, who is a monster romance author. Um, this is Jack, a Halloween monster romance novella. Um, People read this like during Halloween time, but I don't really care about holiday romances and you reading them not in specific times. Like I don't really care about that. So um, I read um, one of her books in this like Monster Ever After novellas. I read her Orc one, super duper fun. And so I thought I'd check out Jack. I heard this one is bizarre. Um, so let's read the summary. Jack is a monster full of tricks and won a very special treat in his pants. <laughs> Susie is feeling lonely on Halloween. She performs a love spell, hoping to summon a nice, perfectly safe Mr. Hunky to keep her entertained, but she fails. The creature that answers her summons is neither nice nor safe, but oh boy, is he hunky. Jack o Lantern is a devious ancient monster who once tricked the devil himself into granting him immortality. Now Jack is here, a grinning pumpkin in the place of his head, a th and a thing out of this world in his very bulging pants. This monster will have Susie in every way he pleases and nothing can hold him back. This sounds entertaining. It's only 49 pages and like I've been loving just entertaining novellas that I can read in one sitting because they're super fun. Then I have Kairos. Um, this is book four in the Captured by uh, the Aliens series by A.G. Wild. I read the first three books in March and so I'm wanting to read the last two in April and so I downloaded 
book four um, and I'll obviously download book five whenever I finish this one. So this is an alien romance series where human women have been captured and uh, they get paired with an alien who is going to save them on this um, desert planet essentially. So this is the fourth book in the series by the way and you have to read these books in order because they build off of each other, okay? What do you do when falling in love makes you a deviant? After fighting with his brothers to rescue five human females, the one thing on Kairos' mind is getting the single human he's protecting to safety. His sole purpose is to reach the outpost on a harsh desert planet so she can be extracted. His whole aim is to complete his mission, except that's a lie. He has been on countless missions. He's rescued countless slaves. Never has he found interest in any captives, until now. He shouldn't want to claim her. His feelings towards her are sinful, deviant. It is not the way of his people. Except everything within him says he should take this small, strange being and make her his own. Now he's not only fighting the monster outside, but the monster growing within. These alien romances are super fun and entertaining. But they're also pretty dark at times, so please be aware there's a bunch of trigger warnings in here. Um, but I'm really excited to read this one because like Kairos is an alien we haven't like learned about really and he has wings which is really cool to me. Next time another alien romance. I have a few on here because I've just been in that mood. We have Hunted by the Alien Assassin by Ella Maven. I always take out my target until her. Bosa. I have many talents and they're all for hire. My best skill is hunting the dregs of the galaxy. And when I find my prey, let's say no one ever hears from them again. My latest target is human trafficker and the kicker is she's human. Selling her own kind? I'll relish this. But when I find there's a more to her story than I've been told, suddenly I'm not sure who's hunting who. Karina. I've heard of the big Kaluma with a spiked bat, so I know evading him won't be a cakewalk. As my assassin, he's ruthless until he finds out my truth. Now he's sticking by my side, claiming me as his mate. And I can't believe it, but I think I'm falling for this cocky alien with glowing blue eyes. Hunted by the Alien Assassin is a full-length sci-fi romance featuring a big bronze alien with a dirty mouth and a woman with a penchant for getting into trouble, no matter what galaxy she's in. Sounds super duper fun. It sounds like she's not actually human trafficking, so I'm hoping that's what's going on because I don't want to read about a human trafficking book, you know. Then I picked up a TikTok recommendation, which is something I rarely do because TikTok has steered me wrong many, many a times. But this one sounded super interesting. We have What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods, who's actually Adelaide Forest, I'm pretty sure. It's like a pen name. I just heard someone talk about this book on book TikTok and I was like, I am sold. I just hope it's spicy because that's what I want. <laughs> Once we'd worshiped them as gods, for nearly 400 years, the veil has protected us from the Fae of Alphamir. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. Um, in their absence, our lives have shifted from decadence and sin to survival and virtue under the guidance of the new gods. I've spent my entire life tending to the gardens next to the boundary between our worlds, drawn to the shimmering magic like a moth to a flame. Then we died on their sword. All that changes the day the veil shatters unleashing the fae upon our world once again. The magic of fairy marks those of us they mean to take. But the misguard protecting Northrek will kill us all before they let the fae have us. There's no choice but to flee everything I've ever known, not if I want to live to see my 21st birthday as a free woman. But before they can capture me, Callum saves me from the wild hunt. Fae marked and on the run, he is able to fight back in ways I only dream of. From tentative alliances to all-consuming passion, our bond strengthens as the fae close in and evil lurks even nearer. With my life on the line, he is everything I shouldn't dare to want and a distraction I can't afford. I can't seem to stay away, not even with something greater on the line, my heart. I'm hoping this is good. This has like a fey, the wall aspect, the same that like Akatar does. So I'm hoping that I can get sucked into another fantasy romance series. Another alien romance that I downloaded is Alien Commander's Mate by Ava Ross. An alien warrior has made me an offer I can't refuse. In exchange, he can do whatever he wants with me for one week. I want a child, but that's impossible now that Earth men are sterile. Then a ping from a distant planet reaches us. Aliens are real, and they're interested in getting to know Earth women better. These Zylans fall into an insatiable urge once every three years called the slacking slocking slocking <laughs> and there aren't enough females to give them what they need 
Like many Earth women, I sign up. For one week, I'll make an alien happy, and in exchange, I get a child. As long as I keep my heart out of the equation, things should go fine, right? But when an intergalactic war erupts, we must fight for our very survival. This sounded super fun. I was just looking up alien romances that were short, and this is only 218 pages, so I'm hoping this is good. Then I have Sin and Cider by Kimberly Reese. I read Nergasm by Kimberly Reese. It's one of my favorite romances of last year, and so I decided to pick up one of her other books. A lot can change in six years. Take me, for instance. I uprooted my small town life to move to Chicago, went to college, and grew up. Too bad I belatedly realized something was missing. Determined to find myself again, I quit my job and head back to my family's apple orchard to do some soul searching. A lot can also stay the same. Case in point, my brother's best friend, Lawson Westbrook. Still charming, still ridiculously handsome, still an expert at making my heart race after an achingly familiar way. His desire-filled eyes and seductive promises tempt me to take him up on his offer for a sinful summer. Lawson may see me different but my heart is still vulnerable. Something's brewing between us and I don't know if it's happiness or heartbreak. I adored the one book that I've read so far by Kimberly Reese, so I'm hoping that I can read this one. I really want to read um, uh, the book that's going to be in the Nerdgasm series, but that one's not out yet, so to tide me over, I'm going to read one of her other books. <laughs> Next, I have a book that I'm like in the middle of. I took a little bit of a break. I set it down, but I'm going to pick it back up soon. Um, I was just in deep study mode for a teacher exam and so I just put it down and it's quite long so I couldn't read all of it during my studying. Um, this is Bride of the Shadow King by Sylvia Mercedes. This is a fantasy romance um, that was recommended to me by um, a lovely viewer on Instagram and so I thought I would give it a shot. A shunned princess a reluctant king, a marriage that could save both of their kingdoms but destroy their hearts. Though she is the eldest daughter, Princess Feyrine lives in the background, shunned from court and kept out of sight. Her chronic illness makes her a liability to the crown, and she has learned to give place to her beautiful, favored younger sister in all things. When the handsome and enigmatic Shadow King comes seeking a bride, Feyrine is not surprised that her sister is his choice. Though not eager to take a human bride, King Vor is willing to do what is necessary for the sake of his people. When he meets the lively princess Isabel, he quickly agrees to a marriage arrangement. So why can't he get the haunting eyes of her older sister out of his head? I'm 50% of the way through and I'm really enjoying it. I hopefully will dive back into this very soon. I downloaded another alien romance. We have Space Mercenaries Prize by Laina Lee. Um, hopefully I'm not butchering that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, when a tiny form crashes into me in the alley behind my old haunt, I don't expect to find a half-dressed human female in my arms. Jenny brings out my instinct to guard and protect. Drunk and eager to fight, I knock out her attacker and vow to take her home to Riga 5. There's only one problem. Jenny's owner wants her back. We wake the next morning with an enormous bounty on our heads. Now Rhea is chock full of no questions asked mercenaries eager for the credits but a promise is a promise and I will get her to freedom. Besides, Jenny is mine and anyone who wants her will have to go through me first. Again, I was looking for any romance novellas. This is only 109 pages, so um, I'm hoping this was good as well. I downloaded a Jessica Kane. <laughs> we have a truck driver. Um, I adore Jessica Kane, and so this is one of her recent releases that came out a couple months ago. He walked into the truck stop diner one rainy night and my life was never the same. The mysterious big rig driver made me feel flustered in ways I barely understood with his hands, with his words, his observant eyes. Now he's telling me that I'm unsafe, that I'm in serious danger unless I trust him in all ways, physically, emotionally, in the back of his rig, I become his without exception. But our happy ending could be cut short by the men who want to hurt me. They underestimate what my truck driver would do to keep me safe though and come home to me forever. A little Jessica novella that I'm ready to read. Um, I haven't read a Jessica in a couple weeks, so I need to get back on the train of Jessica Kane. Another monster romance that I downloaded is Girls Weekend by C.M. Nascota. Nascota? Nascota? I'm so sorry if I'm betraying that. Um, but I've heard great things about uh, this book from my friends and they're very surprised I haven't read this because I love monster romances. A weekend with friends, fun in the sun, and huge orcs. What could be better? That's what three suburban elves think when they book a trip to an 
Orc nudist resort, well known for its libidin, I can't pronounce that word, very well known for its residents and hedonistic parties. Riz, L'Oreal, and Sylvia arrive with plans to sample the DTF locals and work on their tans, not catch feelings. When L'Oreal meets a syrupy voiced gentleman who seems interested in more than just a weekend fling, she finds sticking to the plan is easier said than done. From a public bathhouse to a back alley pub, the trip has unintended consequences on the lives of three work friends and the orcs they meet. Can a weekend of no strings actually end in love? I think this is going to be like a, a series too, um, so I don't think this book ends on a happily ever after, but you have to read the other books to get the HEA. Another alien romance that I have is Tron by Lena Gray and Juno Wells. On Earth, 12 female college students board a starship for a year of interstellar education. Crashing on a primitive planet inhabited by barbarian aliens was not on their itinerary. Once our bonding is complete, Kenzie will be mine forevermore. When the sky crackles with lights, sounds, and colors, a small wingless flyer soars to the ground. I pray they contain blessings that will save our tribe. A small, shapely female emerges from one of the flyers, and I know in my heart she is mine. The gods have answered my prayers, sending salvation from the heavens. My mate has arrived in a wingless flyer, and she is the most beautiful sight I have ever seen. The golden-skinned barbarian thinks I'm his mate. Tron is everything I've ever wanted in a man. He's fierce, handsome, and protective. He worships the ground I walk on. He's also a huge, scaled alien who makes my heart race and my body tremble. When we're attacked by a rabid pack of wolf bats, he's ready to sacrifice his own life to save mine. I'd be a fool to push Tron away, but staying with him means giving up. That's Oreo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's trying to get on the windowsill. Um, but staying with him means giving up the only life I've ever known. This sounds so stinking good. Gives me IPB vibes for sure. And you know, I love that series. So I'm very excited for this one. Then I have Viper by Naomi Lucas. This has been on my KU forever and I need to read it. Um, this is recommended by Jen from the Book Refuge, and I'm sorry I haven't read it, Jen. I know you love this series. Um, I need to get to it. Long we have been alone, without brides, without females to warm us during the long nights, without sweet mates. But then we see them from afar, brides that could be ours, kept away from us by walls and weapons, females we long for greatly, obsessively, human females. And the one with red hair, I want her. I saw her first. I will fight to the death for her. She is mine. So we'll come together and make an exchange with their men that could benefit us all. After that, to the winner goes the spoils. Let the hunt begin. But the red-headed female is mine. I've heard great things about this book. I just need to read it already. I don't know why I haven't. Um, I know I'm gonna love it, so I just need to freaking get on it already. Next, I have Double Dare You by Ruby Dixon. This is a Bedlam Butcher's motorcycle club romance. This is the last Bedlam Butcher book by Ruby Dixon that I haven't read yet. Um, so once I finish this book, I'll be done with the whole series. I think the reason why I didn't read this immediately when I was binging the other books in the series is because all the other ones are like under 100 page novellas, or as this one is only 158 pages, but it's still it's over 100 pages. It was just not what I was wanting to read at the time, but now I definitely do because I want to finish all of Ruby Dixon's backlist. Becca isn't the daring sort. She's a chemistry nerd on vacation from college. She certainly wasn't supposed to be stolen by a rival MC and sold as a plaything. Now she needs a hero or two. <laughs> Locke and Epic might be ride partners, but they're not yet friends. Epic is freshly patched and Locke's carrying a lot of baggage from the betrayal of his last partner. But when they're given a new task, find Becca and bring her home, the men have to work as a team to protect her. And as the threesome spend time alone, they realize they're not only better together, but that a few teasing dares just might bring them closer in a lot of ways. I can't wait to read this one so I can finally finish the series of Ruby Dixon and then hopefully read the very few other books that I haven't read that are on her backlist. Speaking of Ruby Dixon, another one I want to read is uh, Caspar, which is the second book in the Corsair series. Um, I was wanting to listen to this on audio, but we'll see if that happens. The audiobook is not out yet. 
um, and this book has been out for almost a year. And so I'm, I, I've been waiting for the audiobook. <laughs> but that might not happen and that's okay. So um, if I want to get to this before the audiobook, I have it on KU for me to read. Um, this is an alien romance book um, and it's all about Caspar and Alice. Um, you've read that. You've, you met them in the first book in the series, Adiron. Okay, so the summary in this one is very short. It is the second book in the series, so. Um, I live for danger, for excitement, for adventure. When I end up in an escape pod with Alice, though, my world changes. She's human, vulnerable. She does not love danger or excitement, but her mind is clever, her resort's sharp, and her smile brings me to my knees. I want nothing more than to keep her safe. And keep her at my side. What does one danger loving corsair do when he's stranded with a beautiful human female on a jungle planet? I'm about to find out. Love it! So excited for this. I hope the audiobook comes out soon, but if it doesn't, I'll read it on KU. Next, I have a series that I need to finish. <laughs> we have book two in um, the Spider's Mate trilogy, Enthralled by Tiffany Roberts. I loved Ensnared, and so I definitely need to pick up this one, I don't, it's been sitting on my Kindle forever, um, since literally October of last year. It's been sitting there for months. <laughs> I'm not gonna read the summary for this one because it'll spoil book one, but, um, this is about Katon and Ivy, and they're on this alien planet together. He's a spider alien, and she's a human woman who's crashed on his planet, and they are mates. Super duper fun. This is book two, book two and book three, um, like all three books center around their relationship so book one kind of ended on a cliffhanger so um all three books are out so um you can binge them if you would like uh next is a book that i feel like a lot of people want me to read we have captive captive of the horde king by zoe draven this is like a barbarian alien romance series that a lot of people have told me to read and i don't know why i haven't yet because it sounds right up my alley on the unforgiving planet of dakar I did what all humans in our village did, kept my head down, worked to provide for my family, and I certainly didn't break any Dakari laws to risk inciting the alien race's merciless wrath. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for my brother and one careless mistake brings a horde of nomadic barbarian Dakari straight to our doorstep. Led by the powerful Horde King, a cold, ruthless, battle-scarred warrior demanding retribution. In order to save my brother's life, I do the unthinkable. I sell myself to the Horde King as his war prize. I agree to warm his furs, to travel with his horde across the wild lands of Dakar and to never see my family again. But as I struggle with my new reality, I discover that the surly, mysterious, dominant Horde King never intended for me to be his concubine. He wants me as his queen. <laughs> so cute! I'm so ready for this, okay? I heard that this book gives a lot of Cal Drogo vibes, which I'm obsessed with Cal Drogo, so <laughs> I'm very excited to dive into this. I wish there was more time in the day that I could just binge all these books as soon as possible, but unfortunately there is not. <laughs> and the last book that I want to mention is The Fae King's Dream by Jamie Schlosser. This is on my five star prediction for 2022 list. And this is the second book to um, The Fae King's Curse. This is a fantasy romance series. I'm very excited to read this, if you couldn't tell. It's literally a five star prediction for me. The series takes place on a fantasy world where um, royal princes have been cursed to be blind um, and the only way they can like get their sight back is um, to find their uh, mate. But the only way you can like connect with your mate is by seeing them, but they're blind. So like there's a lot of complications going in here. This is about our hero Damon who we met in book one and him finding his mate. The first time I met Damon, he rescues me from a nightmare. Literally, I'm stuck in a coma and my mind is forcing me to relive the horrific accident that puts me in this state over and over again. The gorgeous fake king is the only one that can give me peace. As if the dream can't get any weirder, he tells me we're soulmates. He says he can fix my banged up brain. He wants to be my hero. Little does he know that I just might end up saving him, because once I wake up, the real challenge begins. A bunch of vengeful witches want him dead, and they'll stop at nothing to seal his fate. But I've got plans of my own. The coven has caused too much tragedy, and I'll defend my newfound love, even if it's the last thing I do. And it just might be, because if Damon doesn't survive, neither will I. I can't wait to read this book. Um, expect this to be a part of a 
five star prediction vlog I will post probably towards the end of the year. So there you have it. Those are the 20 books that I currently have checked out on Kindle Unlimited. Please let me know down below if you have any recommendations on Kindle Unlimited. I would love to know. And also let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. We could maybe buddy read some of them if you're up to it. <laughs> if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me a, um, what are we going to do? We're going to leave a a pumpkin or jack o lantern emoji because we talked about Jack by Lila Fay and I thought that was really funny. Um, <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching and we'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!